Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and today I'm going to be reviewing for you the Sony Alpha 7 Mark III. Now this is, uh, cameras are one of my favorite things to talk about and being a photographer myself, you would have noticed that I tend to talk a lot about even smartphone cameras in my previous reviews. So let's talk about the A7 Mark III today. I personally own an A7 Mark II and that's what we're shooting this video on. But the Mark III is something that a lot of us have been waiting for a long time. Reason being, for starters, this comes with a brand new 24 megapixel full frame sensor, which is now a BSI type sensor. It's backside illuminated. So obviously you can expect significantly better um, low light performance and uh, high ISO performance compared to its predecessors, which is the A7 and the A7 Mark II. Of course, when you compare it to the A7S, it's not, but we'll get into that a bit. So you got you get a new sensor, but what you also get is now in-camera 4K video recording, which is something that A7 users had been lacking. And you also get significantly improved button layout, um, also a dual memory card slot. So definitely the A7 III is packing a lot of improvements and a lot of refinements that Sony has kind of come up with over the years as they've refined not just from one generation to the next but also from one camera to the next so we do see slight changes between the a7 a7s and the a7r which is the three series of cameras that sony has and now of course the a9 now when we talk about imaging let's see what this camera can do for starters you get 10 frames per second burst mode which is significantly faster than the a7 mark ii you get the same 24 megapixel resolution but now because of the bsi sensor the iso values can go all the way up to an insane 2 million i think yeah almost 2 million it's a significantly high number of course you're never going to shoot at an iso number that high and i would personally after having tested this camera for a little over two weeks ISO 51200 is also pretty damn usable with a little bit of tweaking in Lightroom a little bit of noise reduction you should have extremely usable results we have a plenty of image samples that you can see in this video and if you want to actually see the proper image samples in full resolution you can check out a review which has a gallery so of course there's that you also get 4k video recording in camera but the problem with that is that you need to have a card that is fast enough to record in the XAVCS format and at that would support the data stream coming through the camera and into the card. You need a very fast card and they're fairly expensive. So if you're going to be buying an A7 Mark III, make sure you get a top of the line SD card for yourself. Speaking of SD cards, you can now use two of them in the A7 Mark III, which is a significant improvement in terms of uh, you know peace of mind i would say and in fact if you're a sports shooter or an events shooter you can put two 64 gb cards in here and not have to worry about running out of space so that's a big convenience um so that's about the imaging performance now let's talk about the focusing that's a significant part of the imaging experience um, having used this camera with two lenses the supplied uh sony loaned us a 24 70 f4 size and I've got a 90mm macro lens myself. Um, what was really clear is that compared to its predecessors, that is the A7 Mark II, the A7, A7S, basically any of the Mark II series and the previous generations, the A7 Mark III has a significantly improved AF system. In fact, I was able to focus on a subject that was lit by nothing but a red 0 watt bulb and in basically pitch darkness, very little contrast, but I was able to lock focus and take a photo at again an ISO level that is pretty insanely high. So the focusing system has really improved. Even in terms of tracking, it does a fairly good job, both in terms of vertical movement and horizontal movement. Again, plenty of samples coming away. So in terms of AF, I don't think there is anything that Sony leaves out. Of course, this is not as fast as the A9. Um, which is insanely fast and is designed for sports shooting. But yes, this is not a camera for sports shooters. This is not a camera for, uh, you know, people who are into shooting fast moving racing cars. But yes, for weddings, for parties, or even as a general camera that you would want to take with you on wildlife uh, trips, this is going to do fine completely. It's going to be absolutely wonderful to use. So overall, the A7 Mark III leaves very little room 
for complaint actually um, but there are a few for starters for a full frame camera that sony markets to the professionals there is no play apps from here which means there is no longer the ability to shoot in camera time lapse or in camera tilt shift time lapses which is a huge bummer because these apps were paid and i paid for it for my a7 mark ii but now i can't use it on the mark iii uh, how are you going to get time lapse mode? You probably will need an external accessory, which again, you're going to have to spend on. So that's not cool. Um, but other than that, there's actually no reason to complain. Um, in fact, we've also done a lot of video work on the A7 Mark III. Uh, a couple of our reviews were shot on the A7 Mark III. Let me just ask my producer which ones they were, and we'll link to them in the video description below. But Video quality on the Mark III is also pretty damn good. You're not going to find reasons to complain. If you do have a reason to complain, it's probably because you're using a wrong lens to shoot the wrong subject. So for example, if you want to use an f4 or an f5.6 lens in a low light situation, you're of course not going to get the right result. So depending on the choice of lenses you have, very strongly recommend prime lenses. You can get a good selection from Sony, from Sigma, um, you know, and paired with the A7 Mark III, you'll have a very, very kick-ass shooting machine. I think you're going to have to bleep that out. But, okay, so moving on, the last thing I want to cover cover about the A7 Mark III is its battery life. Now, Sony, with when they introduced the A9, changed the battery to the new FZ format, which is different from what is in the A7 Mark II, or rather the Mark II generation and before. So you have a much bigger battery now, which gives far improved shooting times in both video and photo. On the A7 Mark II, for example, I was able to shoot about 800 frames on a battery charge using both the EVF and the LCD. And on the A7 Mark III, that number has jumped up to about 1250 roughly. So give or take. And of course, it's got mixed usage in terms of, there's also been some video shot. Uh, I've used the EVF, I've used the LCD. So kind of not very scientific but yes the battery life overall has definitely improved so in closing the great things about the sony a7 mark 3 a far superior sensor to the mark 2 generation uh, far superior ergonomics easier controls impressive impressive high iso performance for both photo and video um, you know and of course the video recording button is now at a more sensible place as compared to the a7 mark 2 and of course, if you get a far improved AF system that is borrowed from the A9, an amazing 10 frame per second burst speed, which should be able to help you track whether it's a bird or your dog running around or maybe some crazy kids in your house who you wouldn't take photos of. And if hopefully Sony will bring back the play apps to the A7 III series, to the 3 series rather, and uh, allow us to shoot in camera time lapses once again. Thank you guys for watching and in case you like this video make sure to hit and like the subscribe button and if you have any questions of course leave us comments in the sections below and i'll get back to you personally thank you guys for watching